the level of Islamophobia in France is crazy. Okay, guys, did you know? <laughs> Listen to the story. A few weeks ago, a woman was arrested by the police in France because she said assalamu alaikum to her neighbors. She got out of her building. She met some workers that she knew and told him assalamu alaikum. A racist neighbor, a racist Karen, we're going to call her. Okay, we got, to, we got a few Karens in here. She called the police and told them, okay, come and get this woman because she said something in Arabic. The police came and arrested the Muslim woman. Wallahi, j'en peux plus. This is too much. <laughs> Wallahi, this is too much. And during the audition, they told her, well, you know, ma'am, due to the context, we shouldn't take any risks. She said, assalamu alaikum, which means peace be upon you. It's the most beautiful way to say hello to somebody. It's peace be upon you. It's like saying shalom. But you don't get in, in trouble when you say shalom. When you say assalamu alaikum, yes. And then the Muslim woman wanted to file a complaint against the, the racist neighbor. And the police refused to take her complaint. She had to call a lawyer to get her rights respected. And she filed a complaint against the, the Karen. Do you see the level of Islamophobia? You can get arrested for saying assalamu alaikum. And a few days ago, there was a pro-Palestinian rally that was uh, authorized by the court because you need to know that France banned Palestinian rallies, but it was finally authorized. And then thousands of people were outside, you know, uh, demonstrating and saying free Palestine, free Palestine. And then they said takbir, Allahu Akbar. And that was scandal. They said Allahu Akbar. How come you listen in Twitter? It's number one topic. It's trending on Twitter because the right wing thinks it's a problem to say Allahu Akbar because the terrorists say Allahu Akbar. So how come? How can you let French people say Allahu Akbar? So if you guys are Muslim and you want to come here, invest or study, just think about it, okay? Before you take the decision. Yeah, actually, the last point was pretty good. And maybe don't, maybe don't, if you're Muslim, maybe uh, don't come to France. Maybe please don't come to France. Just stay in your Islamic country. I, I didn't expect um, she would say anything that I agree with, but the last part I agree with. Um, let's, Let's go through this line by line now, right? So let's see what happens. The level of Islamophobia in France is crazy. Okay, guys, did you know? <laughs> Listen to the story. A few weeks ago, a woman was arrested by the police in France because she said assalamu alaikum to her neighbor. Okay, so arrested. If I call the police and I say that, so this is a Karen, right? Um, as she says, who's complaining about something that is not threatening, right? But again, the details is not that clear. But if I call the police and if I say somebody's threatening me, the police will come and take that person. Like, it's not like they, they just come and arrest that person and, and check what has happened, right? And if I said something, if I... Um, exaggerated or if I was if I said I was threatened and it wasn't a threatening situation the police still has to do is, is, is their job and eventually if I like they cannot not come and not um, arrest a person that is being claimed to cause something that is threatening so I heard something I'm I feel threatened and I shouldn't be there's not there's no reason to be scared i call the police the police has the duty to come and take that alleged threat seriously that's their job right and look what happens according to herself look what happens after right she got out of her building she met some workers that she knew and told him assalamu alaikum okay. a racist neighbor a racist karen so maybe say use the word bigot not racist because it doesn't islam is not a race being muslim is not a race so you keep talking about islam and muslim it seems like you don't understand what islam even is by using the word racist okay we're gonna call her okay we got to, we got a few karens in here 
She called the police and told them, okay, come and get this woman because she said something in Arabic. So you don't know if that's what she said. You don't know what she said to the police. Did she say, like, come arrest her because she spoke in Arabic? Or she called the police and she said, somebody, I feel threatened. You don't know that. You're making that up. You don't know exactly what she said on the, on the phone. And then let's go. The police came and arrested the Muslim woman. Yeah, they apprehended the person that was reported to be acting, to be having threatening behavior. Rightly or wrongly, that's what they did. So here's the thing. We don't know. There's three scenarios here, okay? So let's say, let's accept that the woman was not threatening and she just only said, assalamu alaikum, right? So the, the woman who called the police, she's at the wrong here. She's overreacting. The police could have uh, overreacted or not. We don't know because we don't know what the woman on the phone who called the police said. So don't accuse the police of doing something wrong if you don't have the details. What if I said somebody is threatening me um, and I feel threatened and my security is at risk and you're just exaggerating? The police still has to show up and arrest that other person. If, that, if you're reporting a false claim, that's something that you could do fix after. Allah, what, what, you, you, the police, you know, you should be grateful. The police in France, the police in France is the same police when there are threats against Muslims, shows up and protects the mosques. Wallahi, wallahi, look at this. She's saying, wallahi, what are you talking about? Okay, the same, I have seen, ex, I, I was, we showed on Atheist Republic exactly when Muslims called the police and said, to the police that our mosques are being threatened, we don't feel safe. With the taxpayers' money, France sent, sent police to, sit, to stand at the entrance of a lot of different mosques, just standing there as free bodyguards for these mosques. That's also police, Fr French police. What are you talking about? If there's a claim of threat, the police has to show up, even if it's a false claim. This is too much. <laughs> This is too much. And during the audition, they told her, well, you know, ma'am, due to the context, we shouldn't take any risks. Yes. Yes. If I it, imagine if it wasn't even about Islam. OK, let's say a neighbor comes to me, knocks on my door and I have loud music and they ask me to turn down the music. And I call the police and say my neighbor is threatening me and they're not threatening me. The police has to show up. If I say like, yeah, they, they, they said they, they threatened me. Well, they have to take the person and they have to take that person for questioning. That person can complain later against me. She said, assalamu alaikum, which means peace be upon you. It's the most beautiful way to say hello to somebody. I will say something to you about this assalamu alaikum after, but let me finish this it's video first. Peace be upon you. It's like saying shalom, but you don't get in, in trouble when you say shalom. When you say salam alaikum, yes. And then the Muslim woman wants. No, no, no. You could be like, you could say somebody talked in a language that I didn't understand and I felt threatened, and it could be Hebrew. The police, if, but if you don't have to, say, if you say to the police, like, yeah, I only feel threatened because they spoke Arabic. If the police showed up, I would be condemning the police as well. Like, yeah, don't show up. But if you misrepresented what happened, which you don't know what, what the woman said, then the police might have every right to show up to file a complaint against the, the racist neighbor and the police refused to take her complaint yeah because it was not an immediate threat so the police shows up because there seems to be an it's somebody saying i mean i'm in danger the police shows up for that now you the woman is saying okay they the police as soon as by the way this is the part that she's not highlighting as soon as the police figured out that this is not a threatening issue they released the muslim woman they're like, okay, this seems to be a, a, situa this mis a misrepresentation, an exaggeration of what happened, and they released her. And now she's saying the police didn't take the complaint of the Muslim woman because the police showed up to de-escalate and what they perceived to be could have potentially be an immediate threat. Now you're complaining about a false report. At that moment in time, they didn't take your complaint. What happened after? She had to call a lawyer to get her rights respected. 
So does everyone else. What are you? She had to call a lawyer to get her rights respected. That's how the law works. The rest, that's how the rest of us get our rights respected as well. We talk to a goddamn lawyer. It seems like this is the part what, that she doesn't mention. Her rights were respected in France. Okay, so that's what happened. So thank you for confirming that somebody made a false claim about this Muslim woman. And eventually her rights were, her complaints were taken and her rights were respected. But the problem, you're calling France Islamophobic because she, oh my God, she had to talk to a lawyer. Unlike the rest of us, where the legal system completely respects our rights just just without talking to any lawyer, without without getting any legal help. I didn't know it's only Muslims who had to talk to lawyers to be able to get represented in the legal system fairly. Hmm, it's really unfair against Muslims, isn't it? They have to talk to lawyers. I never had to talk to a lawyer. I just walk into a court and everything just solves itself. And you know, just like they, they just resp- like yeah, of course, Armin. Um, we don't. You don't need legal expertise. You don't need to talk to a lawyer. Like. Wow, Muslims have to talk to lawyers to get their rights respected? This is peak Islamophobia, guys. This is peak Islamophobia. They have to talk to lawyers. Oh, my God. The tragedy of having to speak to a lawyer to get your rights respected. But thank you, lady. Thank you for confirming that her rights were respected in France. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder where does that not happen? You know, where... So you're telling me in Islamophobic France, somebody was harassing a Muslim uh, and her rights were eventually respected and you're calling that Islamophobia. I wonder what happens against non-Muslims. This is a Muslim woman in France. Her rights were respected. What about non-Muslims in Islamic countries? Care to speak about that? Care to speak about the rights of non-Muslims in Islamic country. Do you think that if they get a lawyer, for example, let's say in an atheist in Saudi Arabia or an ex-Muslim in Iran or some LGBT, or let's talk about uh, Sharif Gaber right now, who's, I just saw a video of him in Egypt, who's getting nine years in prison, apparently, based on the title of the video, who just, because he just talked about atheism, nine years in prison in Egypt, just for speaking about atheism. How about that? This is an Islamic country. How about that? How about non-Muslims in Islamic countries? Do they respect the rights? Can can Sheriff Gabbard get a lawyer? Oh, you complain about getting a lawyer? Can we have this level of the what the unjust um, behavior that we have against Muslims? Can we have at that level of unjustness towards non-Muslims in Islamic countries? Can we have a Sharif Gabbard maybe get a lawyer in Egypt and not go to prison for nine years just simply for making uh, YouTube videos. Can we please have that? Look at the hypocrisy of these people. Look at their look at what they're complaining about. France is treating everyone equally, and you complain, but you don't speak anything again about the treatment of non-Muslims in Islamic countries. Let's continue with this. And she filed a complaint against the Karen. Do you see the level of Islamophobia? Look, look. The word she's using is Karen. Okay, where does this word come from? Karen comes from United States. This is a meme from United States. Do you know what this means? Every country on the every country has its fair share of Karens. And what's the male version of Karen? I don't know. Kens and Karens. Okay, every country has that. You're calling France Islamophobic because it has Karens. Show me a country that doesn't have Karens. What the hell are you talking about? So you have Karens who complain and France, it seems like France, France's legal system responded appropriately. The woman who had a false accusation made against her called a lawyer and now her rights are respected. What is the country supposed to do? Not have, do you expect France to have zero Karens? Is that the, is that the standard that you want? You don't have the standard for any country. When it comes to Islamic country, somebody could go to prison in Egypt for nine years because they made videos. And you're calling France Islamophobic for just simply having Karens. 
I'm sorry, I didn't know that. that that's the that. I'm sorry. And again, Karens are Karens against everybody. You can get arrested for saying Assalamu Alaikum. And a few days ago, there was a pro-Palestinian rally that was uh, authorized by the court because you need to know that France banned Palestinian rallies. Maybe because they support Hamas. Maybe because they chant from the river to the sea. Maybe because they have anti-Semitic chants. Maybe because they shout that we are Hamas. And maybe they sh shout that they support what happened on October 7th. Maybe that. Maybe that's why. For do you know if you say Islam, what you call Islamophobic things in uh, in your rally, France closes those rallies as well. But it was finally authorized. Oh, it was finally authorized. Oh my God, so Islamophobic. So the rallies need to have some conditions, and at first they didn't meet those conditions, and then people went and did some legal work, and eventually was authorized. But France is Islamophobic. Unbelievable. You are ungrateful. You are such ungrateful. Look at these people. France has accepted you with open arms and may, is treating you equally. This is what Islam, this is how Islam rots your brain. Because you don't want equal. You want superior. You want complete takeover. Anything short of superiority, you think because of your Islam, you have to be treated differently than everyone else. France is just treating you equally, and you still complain. You the, the rally was authorized, and you're still complaining. You ungrateful piece. I, I'm trying not to swear here. And then thousands of people were outside, you know, uh, demonstrating and saying, free Palestine, free Palestine. And then they said, takbir, Allahu Akbar. And that was scandal. They said, Allahu Akbar. How? Yeah, because, okay, here's the thing. Don't lie to us. We know what Allah Akbar means. Allah Akbar doesn't mean Allah is great. Allah Akbar is meant, is meant to be used as a threat. If you don't know that, you are lying. You are lying. Allah Akbar does not mean Allah is great, that God is great. Allah Akbar means that this is our territory that we're taking over. You know that. I know that. Shut the fuck. I'm trying not to swear here. You you know that. What Allah? People don't shout Allah Akbar just because all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere they decided to mention like, hey, this is a good time to mention that God is great. No, Allah Akbar. Again, you know who says that? Muhammad said that. You know who said that? Muslim Dawa boys and Muslim. The people who promote Islam everywhere, they say that they say we love it that Allah Akbar brings fear to your hearts, and it's meant to do that. Allah Akbar means this is Islamic territory. You know that Muhammad said that. Come in. Listen, in Twitter, it's number one topic. It's trending on Twitter because the there's a reason why people shout Allah Akbar when they crush their enemies they say when they do when they attack when when they kill when they commit violence there's a reason why they shout Allah Akbar it says it says we are here and you cannot defeat us that's what Allah Akbar means. the right wing thinks it's a problem to say Allah Akbar because the terrorists say Allah Akbar so how come how can you let French people say Allah Akbar no it's not that how can you let them it's about what does this mean if France is a country where people are in the streets in thousands of numbers and shouting Allah Akbar, what does that mean about France? If, if you, you have to be either stupid or a liar if you don't understand why that's a concern. You are changing France. You are threatening France's secularism. And thousands of people in the street wanting to shout Allah Akbar shows that France is changing for the worse. If that is not a concern, you're either Muslim or you're an idiot or a liar. So if you guys are Muslim yeah. and you want to come here, invest or study, don't just think about it. Okay. Before you take the decision. No, don't just stay in your stay, stay wherever you are. And France, you shouldn't be allowing these people in anyways. I mean, I understand that you need immigrants. 
Okay, I understand that you need immigrants, but here's the thing. There's plenty of people in South America, in Mexico, in Philippines, in non-Islamic countries in Africa, in Vietnam. There's plenty of immigrants that could come fill the gap that you need. You sh any country in North America and Western Europe, if you are deciding to bring immigrants from Islamic country, I don't know what your what your citizens are doing. You're an idiot. You're you're basically ruining. You're destroying your country. You're destroying your country. By the way, the first part where she said "Assalamu alaikum" is so beautiful, blah blah blah, and all that nonsense. Let me just tell you about what Muhammad thought about uh, uh, saying hi to people. Okay, saying salam to people. Right. This is Sahih Muslim. This is authentic Islamic hadith. So Sahih Muslim means we have two sources of Islamic hadith that are above everything else. This is second only to the Quran. This is as Islamic as Islam could get. This is a inseparable part of Islamic teaching. Okay, Sahih Muslim. Anybody who knows that Islam knows what I'm talking about. This is a fundamental part of Islam that cannot be separated from this Islam, right? So this is a part where this is a saying by Muhammad. Okay, this is something Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi said. Okay, so this is what Muhammad said. And again, when she says salam is so beautiful, so she was talking about how a Muslim is treated in France. Let's look at this salam and how Muhammad said that you should treat non-Muslims, non-Muslims in Islamic land with regards to salam, with regards to saying hi to people. Right, and again, this is about salam. Look at this part, the Arabic part. You see that? This says salam. Okay. So, Muhammad said, oh, I'm sorry, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi said, do not greet the Jews by gr greet meaning don't do not say salam, do not say salam alaikum to them. Okay, do not greet the Jews and Christians before they greet you. So. They have to, because they're inferior to you, you should not be the first one who says hi to them. They should say hi to you, and if they say hi to you, you say hi back, okay? And when you meet any of them on the roads, force him to go to the narrowest part of it. So if you see a Jew or a Christian, do not prompt, do not start saying hi to them. They are the ones who should say hi to you. This is Muhammad, what Muhammad said. And also push them to the side of the road, to the narrowest part of the road. This is how Muhammad said you should be treating Jews and Christians, non-Muslims. And she is complaining about how Muslims are being treated in France, even though being, they're being treated quite well. The police was doing their job. The court system did what it's supposed to do. And her rights were respected. She's complaining that, oh, I had to talk to a lawyer. But she doesn't talk about how Islam itself teach what teaches you. I there's so many hadiths that I could show you about how Muhammad told you to treat Christians and Jews and other non-Muslims in Islamic land. I mean, these this is the best you could treat people, Jews and Christians, because if they were not Jews and Christians, they should be killed. Okay, so Jews and Christians have some privilege. You don't kill them, but you still mistreat them. If they were, if this was a Hindu or an atheist. Yeah, the atheists should, would be, and the Hindu, they would be killed. But the Jews and Christians, they should just be humiliated. There are many hadiths about this. I specifically picked this one because it was about how, you know, she said like, Assalamu alaikum, the most beautiful way to say hi to somebody. Yeah, if they're a Muslim, if they're a Muslim, but not if they're not a Muslim, then you should treat them like this. Anyways. So this woman either does not know her religion does not understand Islam, which if you don't, then come to Atheist Republic. I teach you about Islam. I will teach you how disgusting and barbaric and violent and backward and insane Islam is. I would, I know your religion better than you do. So come to Atheist Republic. I'll teach you. Either she doesn't know these things, which I could educate her, or if she does, if she does know, then she's a liar.